Dear younger self, first of all, I need you to calm the fuck down. Seriously. Today we'll be discussing imperfections with my guest, Joanna Hausman. I got distracted and, oh. and looked at this and that's, find that's it to good. be very appropriate. <laughs> I have ADD, so very much imperfect, yes. She's Venezuelan, like me, so you can guess where we met. Wrong! Actually, we met in New York when I asked Joanna to help me with my project before I even started it. She suggested that I should start a YouTube channel. I still can't believe that you were like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> what? She has an awesomely successful show on YouTube. Number two, Latinas are not all tanned, voluptuous babes. Maybe you already noticed that. Sorry. Plus, she joined me on my fear number 87 where we crashed a wedding. I was I was so I was so nervous. I was more nervous than you were. I was freaking out. It makes me so I was so embarrassed. I felt everyone was staring at us. They were. They were. She's now a correspondent on Bill Nye's show, uh, you know, the science guy on Netflix. So yes, she's pretty much killing it. So, if you could use... That was so loud. That was so loud? Yeah. We're, we're just celebrating that we're doing this interview right now. If you could use three words to describe yourself as a teenager, what words would you use? Oh my god. Well, insecure, which I think is redundant with the word teenager. Forced. Like, that sounds weird, like, but I, it's, I had an... I, I, I forced my identity. Mini skirts. I know that's that, that's your it, word. That's that's a word. But here's the thing: it's the sim the symbolism of a mini skirt, which is something that I never liked wearing or wanted to wear, but wore because mm -hmm. I thought other people wanted me to wear them. Can you tell us all about where you were born and all the countries you lived in? I was born in a Royal Leamington Spa in England. Um, which was, uh, I don't remember much about it. I was only there till about four. And then I moved back to Venezuela because my parents are Venezuelan, we're from Venezuela. And then I moved to Washington DC. And then I went to Boston and I went to a prep school in Boston, which I was miserable in. And then I went back to Venezuela and then I went back to Boston for college. So my whole life has been very nomadic. While juggling all these identities, I kind of lost myself. In the United States, I was not American enough. And then in Venezuela, I wasn't Venezuelan enough. And then within all this, I didn't feel womanly enough. It's really hard because at that age, you want to fit in. When in reality, my advice to every younger self out there is to stand out. I remember at the beginning of my like YouTube career, I wanted to blend in really well. Like I wanted to not show me messing up. But what's weird is the more niche I got, the more true to myself I was, the more people wanted to watch my videos. And in my first episode of Joanna Rance, mm -hmm. I messed up so many times and I would be like, all right, we're cutting that, we're cutting that. And then in the edit, my editor yeah. left all of the mess ups in. All I do, talk in Spanglish over tracks and look at butts. <laughs> Watch me take a tequila shot. Okay, 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 okay. Ah! <gasps> And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, dude, the funniest parts are when you were just being yourself. We're keeping that in. Yeah. And ironically, that was the most successful part in the video. Everyone has the ability to be themselves in that way. Thanks. But it's scary, right? It and also, if, they, if someone says you suck, it's not the end of the world. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, I knew that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we aren't perfect, in, but accepting our imperfections isn't just being okay with them. It's also like those imperfections that you, that you really don't like or, or that would make you a better person if you didn't have them. I think it's okay to work on those. Yeah, I do want to embrace myself 100%, but I also want to be better at, ev at everything that I do. Not only being a comedian, but I also want to be a better friend, yeah. a better person. 100%, that got real for a second. <laughs> if you could go back and tell your 14 year old self what you're doing now, do you think that she would be proud, surprised, disappointed? Like what do you think or how would she react? I think I would be super proud. But I think I'd be like, I can't believe that I did it yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Like, I think I'd be in shock. You always need that sense of perception of mm -hmm. within yourself also to understand how far you've come yeah. um, because you're always looking ahead. Looking in the past was so interesting because, oh my God, like look at all the work that had to be put in to get here and how impossible it seemed back then and how totally not impossible it seems now. I think that big goals are mm -hmm. amazing. 
but big goals happen once in a while. Small goals happen every single day, which yeah. is, I think, why your, um, your challenge to yourself resonated to so many people because you had so many fears that maybe for some people didn't seem big, but for you were huge. And that's what's important and that's what made it so human. What advice would you give your younger self, people who are watching this, that they want to become either, you know, a star, a comedian, something mm -hmm. in this world, but they think that they're not enough, like not good enough, not funny enough, creative enough, or even pretty enough. The people that I see succeed aren't necessarily the most talented. It's the, honestly, the people that wake up, that work, that work, that work, that fail so many times. I've failed so many times. You don't know how many terrible shows I've had in my life. Terrible, that I'm like, I'm never gonna do this again. And then I do it again. I know amazingly talented people, people far more talented than me, that did fail and then got scared and then just went and did a day job. I honestly believe if you allow yourself to mess up and be okay with being a failure sometimes, you're gonna make it. It feels unnatural to wanna to continue after either you get a terrible comment on YouTube saying that you suck or no one laughed at your set, your stand-up set. I think that failures, you learn way more from a bad show than from a good show. When uh, you try something, you attempt something for the first time, you're, you're already winning. Because 100%. you either had a lot of fun doing it or it went really bad, but you learned something from it that you can improve the next time. So the only time you fail is when you don't show up, right? You're afraid to fail to your audience while you're failing, failing to yourself. yourself. I would much rather say, wow, for 10 years I tried comedy and maybe it didn't work, maybe it did, maybe whatever, but I will never forgive myself if I don't <laughs> at least try. Like, yes. just yeah. try. You yeah. no pierdes nada, you don't lose anything. Yeah. You could share the proudest moment of your life. I did a show in front of 1,400 people and I genuinely thought I couldn't do it. That moment, I genuinely thought I wasn't gonna survive. So I went out there and I was like, I'm gonna do something 100% me. Okay. And I cursed, okay. which wasn't allowed. And then I laughed and then I said, well, at least I already f***ed up. And so I cursed again and then everyone started laughing and then everyone was like, oh my God, that's fine, don't worry, like that was so human. Okay. And I was like, okay, I have the balls to not just go in front and do my job, but to be myself in front of people, even when it wasn't allowed. <laughs> I didn't just do it, I did it my way. Vulnerability is such a strong tool because you connect and people become more human. If you could travel to the future and say something to your future self, like 10 years from now, what do you hope from this Joanna. I've, I've been thinking about that a lot. I really, really hope that um, I still have the same priorities and that I don't get too bogged down by the stresses of life. I'll share with you this interview 10 years from today. Oh my God, it's going to be so weird. I actually just freaked out because like that's totally something that could happen. It, 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 yes. I hope I have longer hair. You do? Yeah, or better hair. Better hair? You think My that hair... happens? Like it gets no. better with time? Definitely not. I want her to continue moisturizing. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dear Younger Self. And if you did, and you want to listen to the entire 30-minute interview with Joanna, you can find it on iTunes. This week's challenge is for you to identify one imperfection that you want to keep because it makes you authentic and then one that you want to work on. So if you want to participate, let me know the answer to those two questions in the comments below for a chance to win a glam bag full of makeup and beauty products. I swear I want to keep this so bad that Itzy sponsored this week's challenge for you, so I guess I will have to choose one winner. Okay, so now go watch Joanna's letter over here. Not sure what I'm pointing at. And then if you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this one on a weekly basis. All right, guys, I guess I'll see you next week.